Hello again, this is Kevin Solway from Men of the Infinite. In this video I'll be conveying some of my thoughts on anarchism. And I'll make it clear right from the start that I've found anarchism to be very much of a religion and a fantasy. There's no denying that there are many intelligent anarchists who are well read and have many good qualities. I've personally met quite a number of them. However, intelligence and imagination doesn't always work in our favour. They can also create elaborate fantasy worlds and make them even more of a trap. My honest impression is that the anarchist movement exists not because anarchist ideas make sense, but only because of a disaffection with the system we currently have. A child who is forced to live in a house with foolish parents and is forced to live by their rules, which isn't at all pleasant, grows to dislike those parents very much and wants to be out of there and far away. It's only natural. But that far away can go too far. When you talk to anarchists, one of the main things you'll hear from them is that they don't like paying taxes. They feel that they are being forced to pay taxes at the point of a gun by something they call the state, which steals people's money and spends it on bad things. So I think it's fair to say that they don't want to be part of a democracy. They don't believe in democracy. Because when you're part of a democracy, you sometimes have to do things that you don't want to do. That's how democracy works. The party you vote for might not be the party that wins the major share of the vote, and so you end up having to pay taxes for the inaction of policies that you don't approve of. That's life. In fact, there's no possible way that we can always get our own way. We always have to bend, to some degree, to what other people are doing, no matter how much we might dislike it. Here, you can think of each ball as being an individual, or even an interest group. All these balls are bumping up against each other and restricting each other's movement. The light blue balls could be Christians, the dark blue balls Muslims, and the rest could be atheists. Nobody gets everything their own way. This is just reality, and there's no use pretending that we can get around it. So, I'll begin by looking at some of the major problems of anarchism as they occur to my mind. The first, and something that defines anarchism, is its opposition to what it calls the state. The state, commonly, is the cause of all the problems in the world. But what is the state? Anarchists will often define it as something like a ruling body that initiates violence against others. But in the case of a democracy, the ruling body are the representatives of all those who support democracy. So in this case, the enemy, which is so despised, is in actuality just about everybody who isn't an anarchist. But the anarchist isn't fully clear about this. Their idea of the state is purposely kept very vague for the reason, I presume, to maintain it against all reason and all opposition in much the same way that Christians keep their God as ill-defined as possible. Secondly, is the issue of centralization. Now, centralization is something essential for the functioning of all complex organisms. Take the human body, for example. Each human body is a colony of cells, with different cells being specialized for different tasks. They're all linked in various ways through things like the blood, hormones, and the nervous system. And the brain is the central processing unit, which makes decisions which impact on all other parts of the body. Without this centralised organisation and control, a complex organism has much less chance of survival. In war strategy, if you can remove or diminish the central control of your opponent, the battle is virtually won at that point. Now, anarchism has this huge problem with regard to centralised control, because if they have it, it'll essentially be no different to a democracy, at best, and if they don't have it, then they won't be able to function effectively in a harsh and competitive world. The rest of the problems I'll address arise as a direct result of this lack of centralised control. Justice is something that I would expect to be a nightmare in an anarchist society. Every street could have its own separate law, and you'd never know what their law was. You could walk down the street next to yours, 
and they could shoot you dead for not wearing the right hat, or for not wearing a hat at all. And there's pretty much nothing you could do about it. When there's a fire, there won't be any centralised fire service. Some households may have a policy with a private fire company, and others won't. Many households may not be able to afford a policy with the fire control company, and many other households may be able to afford it, but might decide that their money is better spent on something else. The end result will be a catastrophe, unless the private company, the private fire company, uh, services all their households, regardless of whether they are paying customers or not. The same goes for health and disease. Some people will have health insurance, many will not. But if a person without health insurance protracts a contagious disease, then without any medical care, they'll spread the disease to everyone else. Once again, there's a catastrophe. The last problem I'll mention is the one of defence. In a highly competitive and unforgiving world, it can be extremely expensive to maintain a powerful defence force. Lots of different communities doing their own thing without a central organising representative body are extremely unlikely to have the resources for such a defence force and will therefore be effectively defenceless. You'll hear some anarchists say that there's little reason for anyone to want to invade an anarchist region because there are no taxpayers. Well, there are lots of other reasons why the people of one region invade another region, and some of these include women, natural resources such as oil, gas, minerals, timber and fresh water, and uh, there's many others you can probably think of. If anarchists think that nobody will invade them just because they're not good taxpayers, they're dreaming. So, after all of that, is it, is it at all possible for an anarchist society to exist? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes, provided it is supported on all sides by relatively stable societies like democracies. An anarchist society could exist like this ball resting on a pillow and hoping that the pillow won't swallow it up. In the few minutes I have left in this video, I'll leave you with a few impressive clips of some giant budget advances that are made possible by the existence of centralised controlling bodies and democracies, but which I think would be very difficult to reproduce in anarchistic societies. kilometer ring of the Large Hadron Collider, completing the circuit 11,000 times a second. 96 tons of liquid helium keep the 1600 electromagnets at an operating temperature colder than anywhere in the world. It's actually difficult to comprehend the scale of what we're seeing here, but this is tens of meters high. It lots of it, but it has to be tremendously shielded, right? And I'll get to that just in a sec, but right now, this part here, you can see the spindle. When they're done, they're going to, when they're done building this, they're going to take that.